What's up, y'all? Kevin Kuhn here from Athlete Factors. This is the Athlete Factors podcast. Today, I am at Run On Richardson with Elliot. Hey, everybody. And Elliot. he is going to fit me for a new pair of running shoes. So, if you've never been fitted before, this is probably what it would be like. So, take it away. Awesome. Well, welcome in here, Kevin. Um, just to give everybody a quick rundown for shoes. Um, on the shoe wall, you've got a lot of different shoes. They come in all sorts of shapes, colors, sizes. And a lot of people think that, oh, I've tried an A6 before and that didn't work. Or I tried a Brooks and it did work. But not very many people take into account the type of shoe because there are shoes made for different types of arches, uh, also made for different distances. Like if you were training for a marathon, you might be in a different shoe than if you're training to run a mile as fast as you can. Uh, but we here, we have a little fit process. We're in a little bit, I'm gonna watch Kevin walk. I'm gonna measure his foot to make sure we got the right size. And then recommend a couple pairs of shoes that are gonna suit his needs. And it's up to him to determine which one feels the best and fits his foot the best. So uh, to start things off, I'm gonna grab my little Bring that here and uh, ask Kevin to just go ahead and kick your shoes off and we'll start by measuring your feet. So go ahead and stand up for us and we'll put your right foot on there. Now, a lot of people will stand on this and look at where their toes are and think, okay, that's my shoe size. And that may be true for your dress shoe or casual shoe size, but usually we're gonna add a full size, sometimes even a size and a half, just depending on the brand for a running shoe. So it looks like Kevin's foot's coming right about the 10 line. So we would normally add a full size to that as a ballpark. And then obviously it, it depends on the individual brand. So Kevin, what size do you normally wear? Nine. Nine? <laughs> well, I think that's the first thing we're gonna change. Um, so exciting. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have Kevin walk in a straight line down that way. And I'm, what I'm looking for is pronation to see how his ankle moves as he steps. Is his arch collapsing? Anything like that. So come on back now, Kevin. All right, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of movement. Kevin has a pretty high arch, it looks like. We'll look at that a little bit more in a second. Um, but overall, not a whole lot of movement, very neutral, and a little bit of a narrower foot. So uh, let me ask you this, Kevin. Have you had any injuries that I need to be aware of or, or anything like that? Uh, I injured my back in college. Aside from that, not really. Okay. Now, that was a while ago. So how many years ago was that? That was like 2008. Okay. So really, we're only worried about injuries that have occurred maybe in the past you know, no more than three years out. Anything farther than three years out probably doesn't have a whole lot of context now. Uh, but, you know, obviously those are relatively injury free, so we won't worry about that. Um, now what we're gonna do is get an idea of a profile of the bottom of your foot. And to do that, I'm gonna have you stand on this Purex disc. So we're gonna put both your feet on there. This is a heat activated pad, so We'll stand there for a little bit, and when you step off, we'll get an idea of what the profile of your bottom foot, the bottom of your foot looks like, which again will help me um, pick out the right type of shoe. And while you're standing there, let me ask you, what are you? What's the primary use for these shoes going to be? So we're about to start track season, and I'm working with more of the sprinters, so I'm going to be doing a lot of sprinting, a lot of really short 20, 30, 40 meter accelerations and top end speed. So not a ton of distance. The most distance I'll do at a time is probably going to be like three or four miles. Okay. So mostly sprints. Okay. So right off the bat, we can probably eliminate some more heavier, high cushioned, uh, less responsive shoes. Um, go ahead and step off now. We'll take a look at the bottom of your foot. So for everybody to see right here, I'll move this a little closer. We've got, it's fading a little bit now, but you can see Kevin's got a very high arch. And if you come here to get fitted, we'll have you stand on this, do this for you. And so, you know, it, he really does have a high arch. So, um, good strong feet. Now it, it doesn't, you know, if you've got a lower arch 
flat foot, that doesn't mean that you're not as good as somebody like Kevin. I'm very flat footed myself. My arches pronate a lot. It just means we're looking at different shoes for you. So to give you an example, uh, Hoka has, these are two shoes right here. We've got the Hoka Bondi and the Hoka Gaviota. Very similar, one big difference. You look at the bottom of this shoe, you've got two, type, two colored foams here. You got the green foam and the white foam. The white foam is soft, the green foam is hard. There's a lot more green foam on the inside than on the outside. So somebody like me, not Kevin, whose foot is rolling inward and the arch collapses, this green foam is gonna keep that from happening. This shoe on the other hand, same kind of foam all the way around the shoe would be good for somebody like Kevin. However, this is a high cushion shoe. Kevin's not running marathons. He's doing sprinting, speed work. So we're probably not gonna go for something like this. We want something that gives you a little more responsiveness, something you can feel the ground a little bit more um, to do some sprinting. So with that being said, I'm gonna go grab a couple shoes and uh, what? No marathons. No marathons? Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, Ever. That, he's, he's getting scared already. We'll, we'll stay away from that. Yeah, I will grab a couple shoes and we will try them on, see what fits your foot best and feels the best. So cool. I'll be right back. All right, so we got several shoes to try out here, Kevin. Cool. We'll start with this shoe. It is called Brooks Levitate. This is from their Energize line of shoes, so it's not going to have that soft, plush cushion that a lot of people look for for maybe some longer marathon training. This is a more responsive, springy shoe. So we'll have you try that one on now. I like and, the look. All right, that's you know, we don't buy shoes off of the look, everybody, but. It's an added bonus, so <laughs> we're starting good. Uh, now, when you fit for shoes, there are a couple important things. One is you want to have a thumbnail's width of room between your longest toe and the end of the shoe. And you don't want to, you know, pretend that you've got, well, you know, if I pull my toes back and then squeeze my thumb in there, that's a thumbnail. <laughs> we want a solid thumbnail's width of room when you're standing up putting pressure on your feet. The other thing is the distance from this from your, across your metatarsal joints. If this is being pinched, it can cause a lot of discomfort. So even if it's slightly tight right here, it might be beneficial for you to go to a wide. I don't think that's going to be the case with Kevin here because he does have a narrower looking foot. Uh, I think he's going to be okay with a regular width, but uh, why don't you stand up for us, Kevin, and we'll see how much room we have in these toes. It looks about, about right, so you can't see on camera, but he's got about exactly a thumbnail's width right here. This is his bigger foot. His smaller foot has a little bit more room, but you always fit to the bigger foot. So, Kevin, give him a try. You can run up and down. Do a little walk you feel for them? Yeah. yeah. Now, all of these shoes are relatively similar in that they're designed for the same type of purpose. However, they're made by different brands. There's different foams, different uppers. There's a reason there's more than one shoe company has made it in this world because everybody's got different feet. And what feels good to Kevin might be different than what feels good to somebody else who's got a similar foot and is looking for a shoe to do the same sort of things. Uh, so there's one option. What are your thoughts? You know, I kind of like it. It feels pretty good. It feels pretty comfy. All right. We'll 
we will move on to the next one. Go ahead and slip those off. We've got an On Cloud X right here. On is a newer brand, as you may or may not know, and very trendy. So if you're going for the looks, a lot of people like them. Um, they have something unique about them. They put a plastic board on top of the cushion. So what your foot sits on is a little more hard, responsive, but then there is a little cushion below that to give you some shock absorption when you're working out. So you can give those a try. Awesome. See what you think of them. Now, what size have you worn in the past, Kevin? Nine. Nine? <laughs> this is a problem. We're it's gonna only have to a fix problem it. if there's a solution. The solution is called a bigger size. And I gotta say, you are not unique, Kevin. Most people that come in here, probably to the tune of about 70%, are wearing a shoe that's about a size to a size and a half smaller than they should be wearing or the shoes are designed to fit. Uh, the reason for this is, you know, your dress shoes and casual shoes are probably a little, you know, they, they fit a little different and mm -hmm. so, for example, myself, I wear a size 11 in all my dress shoes, all my casual shoes. All my running shoes, though, are 12 and a half. Um, why that is, I do not know. But it's the way the sizing works for most people. And, you know, yeah. um, something else to be aware of is that if you compare the European sizing, which is actually a measurement of the, the mold that's used to make the, the shoe, some brands are completely different to as much as a full size. And so you can't always go off the number to determine the correct fit. You gotta go off of what you feel and look for that thumbnail's width in the end of the shoe. So mm -hmm. try those out. Any differences you notice between those and the Brooks Levitate? Yeah, these feel a little more like loose everywhere, if that makes sense. Like it, it definitely doesn't feel as uh, maybe snug and secure. Snug, okay. yeah. Like yeah. that, the Brooks shoe felt almost more like a sock. Okay. Like around my foot. Glad you pointed that out. So one of the things you'll notice about this shoe, it's a knit upper. And so it's gonna have a little bit of that soft fit. Mm -hmm. Now again, that doesn't make it better. It, you know, obviously your foot, it's, it's fitting a little bit better, but it, yeah. it will have a different feel. Some people, it may not work as well though. So that's why you gotta come try them on instead of ordering online. Mm -hmm. All right, we will move on to the next shoe. So slip those off. Now we have a New Balance Fuel Cell. Um, again, a similar shoe, light like the rest of these, definitely more responsive. Of the three, this is probably the one with the most cushion. And so we will, this is a uh, pared down version of their high performance marathon racing shoe. Um, so they've taken that, taken a lot of the cushion out of it, made it a little bit lighter, more responsive, and pretty good shoe for uh, you know some light running and sprinting type workout. So we'll see what you think of this one. And one thing I've noticed about this shoe is the back of the heel, which um, people can see uh, right here. This is a popular thing you've seen in a lot. We call it the elf ear here. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see, you know, instead of a loop back here, they've got a little curve. This is designed to make it a little easier for you to just slide your heel in and not have something that curves back towards the shoe that can potentially cut in to the back of your Achilles. So a lot of people really liked it, not, not just with New Balance, but some other brands have done it as well. Um, and I, re I do think that is the future of, of shoe fit. So we'll see how these guys feel to you. Now already looking at this shoe, I can see that you know as Kevin laces it up, he's not pulling those laces as tight like his shoe, his foot is filling up the shoe. So I'm gonna guess that this is one that maybe fits a little bit smaller than the previous pair of on. What do you feel, Kevin? It feels pretty snug, but I still feel like I've got a lot of space for my like 
toes to spread out as I'm making contact with the ground. So I'm glad you mentioned that. That is exactly what we want. When you walk around barefoot, when you put pressure on those metatarsals, which those are the, the joints uh, that your toes connect to, they'll sp spread out. Your toes will spread out. If a shoe is restricting you from doing that, it's not natural and it can lead to injuries and certainly some discomfort. So that's a very good thing right there. A lot of people find that when they have a shoe that allows them to spread their toes out, they can engage their big toe, which will help strengthen their arch a little bit more. So there's that. Now I've got one more pair for you. It's gonna be a pair of Symphony Confadas. This is probably the most well-known shoe out of the bunch. It's been a popular one for a long time. It's definitely gonna be the lightest weight, mm. but there's always a trade-off with things. It's not gonna last as long. You gotta remember, every time you take material out of a shoe, it's you know, the law of physics. When you take material away from something, you lose structural integrity, and it's not gonna last as long. Um, but having said that, it is a very comfortable shoe to a lot of people. And, you know, you just might have to burn through a few more pairs than you would of uh, something like uh, the, the Levitate or the, the Yawn Cloud X there. So we'll see what you think of these guys. They look pretty. They look pretty. You well, know, I, uh, my coach used to say, running fast is 90% looking good. And... I, I take that to heart, you know? I genuinely believe that. Well, I'm glad you think that. <laughs> Hopefully we can find something that looks fast and feels fast. Yeah, I like how light these are. I like, I like shoes on the lighter end. Well, that makes sense. For the type of running you're doing, usually you're going to enjoy a, a lighter shoe. Mm -hmm. You you feel faster, a little more agile, a little bit more springy. Yep. Now you would, you know, if you were training for a marathon, you wouldn't want to go with something that light. Mm -hmm. Your feet are going to get tired. It's not going to support your foot as well. But um, I wouldn't train for a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not forget. <laughs> Kevin does not train for marathons. Um, okay, so we've tried on four shoes here. Mm -hmm. At this point, I would, let's try to narrow it down a little bit. So, yeah. they're obviously all great shoes, but, you know, some are probably going to feel better on your foot. Mm -hmm. So, is there, are there maybe one or two that kind of stand out to you as your favorites? You know, uh, the Brooks and this pair of Sockneys, I think, are kind of, Definitely set themselves apart a little bit. Definitely, yeah. And I, I really like the New Balance as well, but I think, yeah, Brooks and, and the Sockney are definitely in the top, top two for me. Okay, well, let's do this. I'm going to have you take one of those off, and you're going to put one of the Brooks on the other foot. It's not weird. People do it all the time. I do it myself to compare one shoe to another. Just wear one on each foot and see what the pros and cons are. Hopefully, one arm will feel a little bit better. And a good way to think about which one is best for you is which one do you notice less? A shoe that's comfortable, but you're not thinking about it a whole lot. There's not a whole lot about the shoe that makes you think about it when it's on your foot. Because the last thing you want to be thinking about when you're trying to do an intense workout um, is your shoes mm -hmm. and how they feel on your foot. You just want to be comfortable and thinking about running fast. So try to, you know, it's a little bit counterintuitive to think about which one you notice less, but um, see if that helps you. I'm definitely noticing the sock knee a lot more. Okay. Brooks just it just feels like it's it's my foot that's exactly what we want so in this case I would steer you towards that obviously you've got to go with what feels good but I would steer you towards the one that you notice less mm -hmm. so the final step for our shoe fit is to see if we can take that feeling up one more notch with an insole to customize the fit 
So I'm going to have you take off the saucony, keep the brooks on while I grab an insole for us. Now, as we used our Curex disc earlier to get a profile of bottom of your foot, determined you've got a very high arch. So we're going to go with the high profile. Now, all this is is to fill in all the space between that high arch and the bottom of the shoe. The shoes are designed to fit a lot of different people. Um, some of them may be a little flatter footed. And so by sticking this in here, we can try to really fine tune it to your foot. So we'll have you try that on and compare those two. So how does the how does this shoe look? Looks pretty fresh. Pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. Is that what the young kids are saying these days? I don't know. Um, it smells fresher than this pair. Well, that's not saying as much. <laughs> um, and you know, when you're picking out shoes, color should be it, it should be the last thing on your list. Yeah. No, I However, like, I uh, like the way they look. For sure. There, most of these shoes do come in multiple colors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in that particular one, I can think of at least two other colors we've got, I think, in your size right now. Nice. Um, but, I don't know, that's, that's, that's a pretty good looking Blue's one. Blue's good. There. So, yeah, blue's good. So, how you, how's that insole feeling in there? Okay. I definitely feel uh, like shoe or, like, I, I can feel the insole touching all of my arch. Well, that's exactly what we're going for. We want something that the idea is to even out the pressure. So instead of, you know, a lot of pressure on the heel mm -hmm. and then the forefoot, we've got a more even fit throughout. So, you know, you feel a little bit in your arch, midfoot and, you know, metatarsal heel, everything, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just the heel and the forefoot like you might get in a more traditional shoe. Well, so this, as far as the shoe fitting goes, this is about everything I can do for you. I, you know, recommend a group of shoes for you, and then it's up to you to pick them out. Yeah. And see if we can customize it. Um, but do you have any questions for me? Um, I don't know. I think we've covered quite a bit. At this point, it's like, uh, the obvious questions are like cost and things like that which is going to be yeah. different you know depending on the shoes that you're offering but um i mean for the most part i think we've covered yeah. quite a bit well as far as cost goes most of these shoes are going to be somewhere between about 120 and 150. um you know something like an insole that can be another 50 dollars on top of that uh, insoles will last you for several pair of shoes though, so it's not something you have to get every time you get a pair of shoes. Uh, another thing about the price of shoes that a lot of people think that a more expensive shoe is better, mm -hmm. uh, that's oftentimes not the case. Um, it, you know, everything we've got is going to be for a purpose, so typically higher cushion shoes are a little bit more expensive because there's more material in the shoe. That doesn't mean the shoe is better. Um, like in your case, you know, we're not looking for a high cushion shoe. Mm -hmm. So some of you, you know, like the Saucony Kinvara right there is one of the lesser expensive shoes we've got here. But that doesn't mean it's not as good as, you know, like those Brooks Levitate right there, which are a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing, is, you know, the Saucony is not going to last as long. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes, you know, the amount of mileage you can get for how much you spend is going to even out um, for the different shoes. So... Oh, I did have one more question. What's that? So, since I'm going to be doing a lot of sprinting, does the, like, angle of drop, does that come into play here? Does that, do you think that matters more for sprinting versus longer runs or longer running, longer training, things like that? The drop of the shoe is one of the most overrated things that people think about when it comes to a shoe. Uh, I, for one, I run on the balls of my feet when I'm in really good shape and I'm doing all my exercises. My heel hardly hits the ground. 
And I used to do that with a shoe that had a 12 millimeter drop, mm -hmm. and then I had an insole in there that added another couple millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, I run in this Saucony Freedom here with a four millimeter drop, and I can tell you it's almost exactly the same. The only difference is that the first couple times I'll run in a shoe with a higher drop, you know, I, I, I'm, my an ankle's at a little bit of a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, I think more important than the drop of the shoe is actually the just the fit, the size, you know, and the, the right type of arch support. Because you could have a zero drop shoe with, you know, it's tight, your metatarsals are being pinched, and it doesn't have any arch support, and you need arch support, and it's going to mess your foot up a lot. But if you've got a properly fitting shoe, plenty of width for your metatarsals, and the correct amount of arch support, you're going to be good whether it's a higher drop or a lower drop. Now sometimes there are situations when we're dealing with a specific injury. A common one is plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendonitis, mm -hmm. uh, which oftentimes are related, uh, where we might think about the drop a little more specifically just to change the angle that your ankle is at, um, you know, whether to either stretch out your Achilles and mm -hmm. the, the plantar fascia or even you know raise your heel a little bit just to alleviate some of that pressure uh, but that's very situational mm -hmm. for the most part you know I, I wouldn't worry about the drop very much yeah um, I remember when I was in college I had a pair of ASICs uh, Nimbus and I remember like taking the insoles from old running shoes and just like putting like two, two or three extra pair in there, I never had any issues not landing on the balls of my feet. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I probably had like a 20 millimeter one thing I One thing I will <laughs> say about uh, somebody who might be considering a zero drop shoe that's never used it before, is you do need to ease into it. Um, if you go from running in something like a, you know, an A6 Nimbus, that's, that has a pretty high drop, mm -hmm. um, to a zero drop shoe, and you're a forefoot striker, uh, somebody that you know strikes the ground first with their forefoot, you're gonna get sore in your Achilles, soleus muscle, and calf. Yeah. Um, so you gotta ease into that. It's very easy to strain your calf and hurt yourself, set, your back, set you back even further yeah. by going in uh, too quickly. So yeah. just be careful. Yeah, Every the position time you, that your ankle is in, the, the angle, that you'll begin to absorb force is gonna be way more excessive yeah. if you're not used to it. Yeah. Like, it. It was the same thing with uh, with all the like barefoot yeah. running fad kind of that happened, you know, yeah. 10 well, years you ago. Know, to give some people some insight as to how Hoka, a shoe that, you know, is kind of the polar opposite of a barefoot shoe mm -hmm. came around, they their brand the company was started Around the time that the whole barefoot movement was at its peak, um, a lot of people got injured doing that mm -hmm. and then found that if they put on a pair of hokas with all that cushion, they got over their injuries quicker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in your case, we're not trying to get over an injury, so hokas weren't really something we're thinking about. You know, doing sprinting is a little different. Uh, but, you know, they're a great shoe for somebody trying to get over an injury that maybe needs a little extra cushion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anybody that's thinking about trying the barefoot movement thing, I would, you know, consider that the specific examples used to promote barefoot running are oftentimes people, uh, whether it be the Tarahumata Indians down in Mexico or mm -hmm. elite Kenyan runners, a lot of those people grew up at very high altitude. So for one, they're running slower. Also, on dirt roads that are experiencing a lot of elevation change. So again, running slower. And they grew up barefoot. Very few people here in the US who are trying to start barefoot running grew up at high altitude running on dirt roads mm -hmm. and were never put on a pair of shoes before they were 15. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very different thing when you try to go from having worn shoes your whole life and you're you know you're 35 years old to start you know you know 
doing some air like that for sure that's a big change that uh, you know your body really is not adapted yeah and ready to handle yeah it's not prepared for that that's for sure so yeah any other questions you guys can't see her but we've got an awesome camera person over there Carrie she's helping out uh, Thanks, she had Carrie. a question a good one actually about heel strikers and how does that factor into what shoe you might get um, and what I would say about that is you know a lot of people think that well if you're heel striking you need you know something with a higher drop so you got more padding in the heel if you're toe striking you need some, you know more closer to a zero drop shoe uh, but what I would I don't think that's necessarily true we were meant talking earlier that, you know you can toe strike with a really high drop you know the mm -hmm. shoes like the that nike came out with the vaporfly four percent and now they've gone on to the vape uh alpha fly i guess um you know something's got the endorphin pro these are shoes designed to and i mean they've gone under two hours for a marathon all of those records have been smashed recently and those things have a really high heel to toe drop mm -hmm. and though the people wearing them are they're heel, they're toe striking um but more important than whether your heel hits first or your toe is where your foot is in relation to your hips when it hits the ground. Mm -hmm. So if you're toe striking with your foot out here, not good. Very inefficient way to run. You're putting on the brakes every time your foot hits the ground. If you're heel striking with your foot right here in relation to your hips, it's gonna be a very smooth, efficient ride, low impact. Um, you know, that's something Kevin might be able to talk a little bit more to. That's kind of what you do, so yeah. if you wanna add anything. Yeah, it's basically relative to your center of gravity or your center of mass, any, any contact out in front of you will be a breaking force, whether it's your heel or your toes or midfoot, whatever the case may be. Uh, that's, that's not something you wanna do, you can't, in a car, hit the gas and the brake at the same time for a long time and expect to go anywhere, right? So you want to land as much as possible either right underneath your center of gravity or if you're going faster, sometimes that's a little bit behind you even. Yeah. So yeah, as much as possible underneath you so that you're accelerating forward. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly right. Um, I, you know, don't don't worry too much about that. I, I think a lot of people put way too much emphasis on what well, I'm heel striking and, or I'm forefoot striking. It really doesn't change what shoe we're going to pull for you. You know, like I said before, it's you know, the size, enough width, and the right type of arch support is way, you know, that's going to be the same thing whether you're toe striking or heel striking. So um, I wouldn't let that, you know, steer you one way or another. I don't know. Obviously, if you, you come here, you get to try some shoes on. You can try running up and down like Kevin did a little bit, and you'll you'll notice that some will feel better than others. Um, and you know, obviously, when you try them out, you can you know you run naturally. So, and we have a treadmill too. So, thanks for pointing out that, that carry. Um, <laughs> it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. That's what it's here for. So, yeah, I think uh, that's everything I would have to say about that. So. Any more poignant questions? No, no? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. All that right. was awesome. Well, that's a nice little caveat. Sweet. Um, hopefully, we'll have some viewers and listeners throw some questions in that, yep. that we'll be able to send your way. Sounds good. If anybody has any questions for me um, or anybody here at Run On, I mean, first off, come and see us. We're open for business. Um, we're doing shoe fittings. If you prefer an outdoor fitting to be a little bit safer with the coronavirus pandemic, we offer that as well. Um, you know, feel free to drop us a DM on Instagram. Just if you have any questions, our handle is run underscore on underscore Richardson. Um, or you can ask Kevin for some contact info. Yeah, and show up Wednesday nights. Wednesday nights, six o'clock, social run. Good times. We got dogs. We hang out in the parking lot afterwards with our blankets and coats. <laughs> so that's what we just got finished with here. That's right. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and doing this with us, Kevin. Hey, no, thank you for showing me the errors of my ways with We're tiny all shoes. In progress. Yeah, I'm like foot binding over here. You are. <laughs> Time to stop. 
Awesome. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching and listening. And go follow uh, Ron Richardson. And yeah, we'll see you next week for next episode. Adios.